Scribble Not blew my mind when it first came out when I was a kid. The graphics were nothing crazy, although it had a cozy style. And the gameplay wasn't anything out of the ordinary either. I would even go as far as to say that it can be considered a sandbox game since the tasks felt very easy and vague, but the game wanted you to solve them in your own crazy and creative way. When in doubt, spawn a giant Cthulhu to just grab the target at hand and magically their problem will be solved. I guess having your cat stuck on a tree isn't so bad when you're being grabbed by a cosmic entity. If I want to be able to generate a 3D model of anything I want, I need access to some sort of an API, where I can make requests to it through Unity and get back the model in return. While researching on the internet, I came across Poly API by Google, which sounds like exactly what I want. So it's time to get the. Oh, what's going on? Oh. Okay, how about this? Oh, these are literally models tagged with the word API. Okay, let's try this again. Third time is the charm. This looks like it will do for the task at hand. Lucky for me, they even have a Unity runtime importer, which is literally what I want. The API wasn't really happy with me at first though, because as it turns out, you need to contact Sketchweb support to get access to their API first. Some APIs are publicly available for free. In fact, when you visit a website, you make a request to their server to serve you with whatever you're seeing on your screen oftentimes without requiring any sort of authentication. One classic example of a publicly available API is Swapy, where you can get information about the people and places in the Star Wars universe. You can even make a request right here on the browser to get a feel for it. Unlike Swapy, Sketchweb API requires that you sign up for their API to be able to use it, and so I did, and luckily they returned back to me with my credentials in a day. And turns out I am a Dumbo and I applied for the wrong kind of API authentication. The version I applied for was more suitable for access through a browser, which I could have worked around, but I am lazy, so I instead made a request asking the support to correct my credentials to work with the kind of authentication I need instead. I recreated the same login attempts I am doing at Unity over at Postman, which is a handy program to test API requests to your favorite backend, which is how I knew my API credentials were definitely not working. While waiting for my API approval, I decided to set up my .m variables, so don't even think about sneak peeking my API credentials. I even found these handy dandy functions online to easily load .env variables to a C# -sharp function. Now as you can see, I can set my variables to anything I want and access them on Unity. I also yoinked some simple third person controller script from ChatGPT, and honestly it worked better than I expected. I also spent way too much time making sure the input text blinked just right. The player can move freely, but as soon as they hit enter, they'll go into summoning mode. While it's on, I listen to the player's keyboard inputs through this beautiful piece of code. It has been a couple of days, and my friends over at Sketchfab API still have not responded to my second request. So I actually got started with my next project idea, where I want to make a... Sprinkler. Yep, you guessed it, literally a regular sprinkler in Unity. Now first I just need to figure out how to simulate fluids in 3D. Jason here actually shared a very handy slideshow. All I need to do is understand and implement this math in Unity. So subscribe if you want to see which slide I'll quit trying. Well it's a brand new day and would you look at that, the goats over at Sketchfab actually updated my API keys to work with the Unity importer. As you can see, now when I make a request through Postman, I actually get back the tokens I need to start downloading models. I was even able to download this cute little fella as an initial test, which instantly ate me so my character was in his stomach, so that's great. Check out this blacksmith model I download- oh shit I slipped! He actually looks pretty cool up close though. You may have noticed the massive size difference between the models, and I am not interested in recreating grounded, so I think it's time to shrink these bad boys. Just by looping through all the mesh filters on the models, and calculating the distance between the furthest vertices, I was able to get their sizes on each three dimensions. Now this is a 2D diagram, but the same idea applies in 3D, where I would find the furthest points on each dimension and just calculate the distances between them. Then all I had to do was to grab the longest dimension of an object, calculate the ratio that I need to shrink them by, and then apply that to the object's scale. 
For the next step, I want to be able to download models without having to copy their IDs from the Sketchfab website. First of all, how can I have an idea of what the model will look like without downloading it? Well, luckily, all these models also come with a huge thumbnail image. So I can get a rough idea about what I'll be instantiating in Unity if I go through with the model. Now it's time to combine this power with the ability to search for models through a keyword. The c -sharp wrapper for the API already supports this. So all I had to do was to call the function, but I only wanted to grab the first 10 thumbnails. Just as a test, I wanted to download all these images and display them in the Unity game. And I'm clearly downloading something, but something about this thumbnail didn't look right. After some fixes, now I can actually tell that they are thumbnails, but they still look stretched, which was because I was trying to fit these images into a square where they were initially a 16 to 9 ratio. Once I resized the image objects, they actually looked great. Now the player can choose what they want to summon exactly. Now the idea is that to grab the first 10 models through the API, populate the images with their thumbnails, and finally listen for the next number keystroke by the player, and if they hit an eligible key, instantiate and resize that model. Here I search for the keyword dog and then choose the third thumbnail. And afterwards I search for the keyword cat and chose the fourth thumbnail. And they are both imported to my game in runtime. As you might have noticed, summoning everything on top of each other isn't very fun. So it was time to enable the player to summon anywhere they want. So I brought back our friend the look sphere from my previous video to indicate where is the player looking at. Now the player can choose a location and the summon will be instantiated there. After implementing the summoning at locations, I quickly realized not all models are created equal. Some models are centered around their head, some below their feet, and it's all over the place. To fix this problem, my idea was to measure the distance of the lowest point of the summon, and then move the summon up until that point where it will be equal to the summoning location. Now this issue sounds very simple, and it is, but it took me a ridiculous amount of time. I wasn't able to get the correct world position of the summon, and I would summon them far from the origin and still get values like this. Instead of just reading over my code once, I instead spent hours reading documentation and forum pages, just to realize that I was able to access the locations of the mesh vertices before I moved the summon to the correct location. At the end, I was able to correctly summon any model on their feet, but then I realized the same issue exists on other axes as well, where they aren't centered. So what I wanted to do was to shift the objects in the other two axes so that they will be centered. To do this, I needed to measure the distance going in both directions, calculate the difference, and then shift the object accordingly. So I obtained the distance the model spans in every direction and calculated. With those changes in place, you can see that this dog model that is actually very off-centered without the fixes can now be summoned perfectly centered. Now the player can summon anything they want nice and centered, but why would they? It is time to give the player some reasons to summon objects with heavy inspiration from scribble knots. Why do people actually like this game? I think it's time to go on a deep dive on reddit and read what people like about it. Here's what is on my mind so far. Here, you just, you just gotta listen, okay? Here, here we go. The player will be able to summon an item with some adjectives such as big or red. I'll pick out these adjectives that I can work with, modify the model accordingly and then instantiate it. At the end, I'll store these adjectives and the words related to the summon on the summon game object. Those words will be used to check if a summon is suitable solution for the task at hand. In order to achieve this, I need to improve summoning by adding, obtaining the adjectives and then creating some basic puzzles. Alright, the first task as we try to finish this quest line is to implement some adjectives. In scribble notes, there's actually a dizzying amount of adjectives that you can add to your summoned object. Like an absolutely crazy amount. You can summon things like an agricultural rock, or my personal favorite, a xenophobic rock. Which I think it has a different meaning now, a more negative one, but I guess this game was from a different time, right? <laughs> Before implementing a whole agricultural system, I think I should start simpler. So I'll go with size, bounciness, colors, and flying. The way it will work is there will be an input parser class that will receive whatever the player types in the game. 
and then it will send to the summon controller an attributes class. The player can type whatever they want, so the true mission of the input parser is to try to understand what is the player trying to do. Now probably a large language model would be the perfect use for this case. But instead, I chose the simpler and cheaper solution where I have hard-coded hash sets of colors and words that are synonyms of big or small and finally the synonyms of flying or bouncy. A hash set behaves like a dictionary where looking up if a certain key exists in it happens in O1 time as opposed to ON, similar to what you would find in a list. Without getting into the details, this just means that whether I had 50 or 5 million words in my hash set, it would take the computer the same amount of time to look up. So this is how the input parser function looks like at the end. I pop the rightmost word out, since that's our keyword, and then for the rest of the words, we check one by one if they exist in any of the hash sets. Note that I am using the first appearance of a certain attribute, which means if you wanted to summon a blue red cow, you would get a blue cow. Here you can see what we can also do by combining adjectives such as a red cow and a big red cow. In order to have a fast or slow cow, you must first have a moving cow. So I wrote this basic movement code for the summons where they will just walk around in random directions and if they hit something they'll look away. The first trial of the basic movement code looks great. For a fast or slow cow, I just change their movement and rotation speeds. Here's the first look at some of the fast and slow cows. Some of the fast summons were disappearing, so I wanted to examine what was going on. As a result, please enjoy this footage of some fast roaming cows. Bouncy summons have the ability to jump, and flying summons aren't affected by gravity, and they can also move in any direction in 3D space, including up and down. They have the tendency to fly out of the map, so I turned the map into a spacious cage to make sure they can run out. Now we can all enjoy this peaceful footage of 30 giant red bats flying around recklessly. Now looking back to the project diagram, the only piece that is missing is grabbing the related words with Datamuse API, which is the free API I have found where I can obtain words related in context. Here's a quick demo on Postman. If I grab words related to cow, we can see milk or calves. Or if I search for dogs, we can find words like puppy, barking and obedience. Now implementing this API in Unity was another task. The main issue is the only way I know how to make requests is through coroutines and you can't really return values from them, unless you save them in a public variable. So instead as a better solution, I pass a reference to the summon object every time the coroutine is started. This way once it's complete, it can go and store the related words to the summon object directly. As you can see in this example screenshot of a cow summon, it has all the related attributes attached to it once it is summoned. Okay, now I need you guys to bear with me for one last time here. As the final piece of the puzzle, it's time to add some puzzles to the game. I don't want to have a player summon something super specific. In Scribblenauts fashion, I want it to allow creativity and fun. So the idea is to get the synonyms of all the related words of a summon and also get the synonyms of all the solution keywords and try to find some matches. Perhaps it won't be quite as interactive as Scribblenauts, but oh well. I think this will capture the essence of the task for now. Alright, this is the part where everything comes together. I have made some example puzzles and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Let's see the first one here. In bodies I dwell, support with might, when shaken or stirred, I hit him from sight. Oh, this must be a bone. Right next. Some say that I have a long face, I'm very good at running fast, so people ride me in a race. Okay, this is clearly a horse. I'm the biggest reptile living in the water and have a shoe named after me. A shoe? Oh, it's the crocodile. Oh, it's a big one right here. And next, I have a head and a tail, but no arms and legs. Heads and tails? This is a coin. Final puzzle. I am in the screen in your living room, but I don't belong to a window. A screen without a window? Ah, it's a television. Oh, wh wh what's going on? Looks like there's a final secret puzzle here. What should you do next? Thanks for watching.